With Elden Ring DLC coming out eventually at some point this year, I figured there'd be a lot of people coming back to the game and wanting to start new characters in order to access that DLC with a fresh character. So, I have put together a route here that combines all the good things from other routes and some other things from the route that I enjoy taking in order to get you the most overpowered strength build possible by the time you hit Margit the Fell. So, with that being said, let me know anything down in the comments that you guys would change about this route, but I think we got a pretty good thing going here, so let's go ahead and get right into it. For our starting strength build, you're going to want to start with the hero class for the highest strength attributes. You're then going to choose the golden seed for that extra flask, and then you're going to move into the start of the game and go all the way to the grafted scion, jump off at the end to get to Limgrave. Now one thing to take note of while you're running through Limgrave on this route, anytime you see a golden seed, go ahead and pick it up because that's going to go ahead and give you an extra flask charge, allowing you to have more healing once you fight the first boss. This whole route should take you somewhere around one hour to get everything you need in order to get as overpowered as possible with this strength build. So you're going to get into Limgrave, progress as you naturally would, all the way until you open up the door and get to the first step site of Grace. From here it's going to be your basic starting route, you're going to want to get three sites of Grace and sit at the third one, which is going to be the gate front, and you're going to talk to Melina and get Torrent. Now that we have a way to move around quickly, you're going to end up going into the gate front ruins, and you're going to go down and get the wet blade, because you will need to apply Ashes of War to our weapon. Once you've received the wet blade, you're then going to go back to the gate front ruins site of Grace, and you're going to run north all the way until you get to this location on the map, because we are going to pick up the Strength Knot Crystal tier, which is going to give us plus 10 strength after we consume it. You'll also need to stop at the Storm Hill Shack site of Grace right here, and on one of the rafters next to the shack is going to be a stone sword key. Grab this because we will need it to unlock our first talisman. At this point, you want to make your way east to the War Master's shack because we're going to talk to Burnall, who's going to be selling Ashes of War. For 1200 runes, you're going to want to snag Stamp Uppercut because this is an incredibly powerful move, especially with the strength weapon we're going to be grabbing. And now it's time for us to use that stone sword key that we just grabbed and move all the way over until Summon Water Village, where we are going to snag our very first talisman. You'll find an imp statue with a fog door on the right side of the ruins, use your stone sword key, go down into the room with all the turtles and open that door, and you will be receiving the green turtle talisman. For strength builds, having extra stamina is awesome, and this is very efficiently placed to give us an extra 17.7% stamina recovery speed right here at the beginning of the game. At this point, we're gonna go grab our weapon. That's right, we're gonna head all the way east, or at least as east as we're gonna be going in this particular tutorial, and you're going to need to head into Kaled. There's going to be a stagecoach located right here on the map, but I'm actually going to get you to the site of grace beyond it so that if you do die, because the enemies are rather high level here compared to you, you can start at the site of grace and just run directly to the carriage, grab your weapon, and get the heck out of here. The easiest way I have found to grab the weapon from the back of this carriage is to get as close as you can and then start crouch walking up as to not aggro any of the enemies in the area. Once you open up the back of the carriage, you are going to be receiving the great sword. This weapon starting out is going to have great physical damage and strength scaling at C, but it's going to require 31 strength to use, which you definitely don't have. However, that's not going to be a problem because I'm going to take you through that in this video. From this point, we're going to head to the Third Church of America in Limgrave. So you're going to head back to the southwest, and you're going to head here to grab the Flask of Wonders Physic. You do need something to drink that Strength Knot Crystal tier that we just got earlier, so this is where you're going to pick that up. From the Third Church of America, you are going to head south into the Mistwood, and you're going to be picking up two different tiers, as well as the Axe Talisman, in order for us to get those heavy charged R2s as strong as possible. Both of the tiers you need are going to be located right here at the Minor Erd Tree in the Mistwood, and you're going to be picking up the Spiked Crack tier and the Green Spill Crystal tier. The Spiked Crack tier is going to enhance your charge attacks by 10%, and when combining that with the Axe Talisman we're about to pick up, you should have about 26% increased charged attack damage with both of these combined. At this point, you're going to head directly to the west, and you're going to run into the Mistwood Ruins. There will be a Rune Bear there, so you need to be careful going down the stairs, but at the bottom of the stairs will be a door, and inside of that door is a chest with the Axe Talisman in it. Also, while you're watching this video, just to discuss what the Green Spill Crystal tier you just got does, it does increase your max stamina by 15%, so you do have some variation and variety to choose from when going into the first boss. Now at this point you have the majority of stuff you need in order to become overpowered incredibly early in the game, but we are just missing some runes. So what you're going to need to do is at some point during this journey you will have already talked to Melina and she will have invited you back to Roundtable Hold. You need to talk to D and then go into Summonwater Village in order to obtain Deathroot from the Mariner. 
We'll now start the journey in preparation in order for you to get a ton of runes here at the beginning of the game. You're going to take this death route back to D, and he's going to give you an introduction with Garonk. We don't actually care about talking to Garonk, but what we do care about is him teleporting us by this portal located here on the map all the way to the place where we need to be in order to start getting these runes. But now that we have access to the portal, we do need to snag for ourselves a bleed weapon. So you're going to head down into Weeping Peninsula to the Broken Down Stagecoach, and you are going to grab the Morning Star. Are. You can grab any other blood weapon you would like if you know where another one is, but this personally is the one that I chose to access. Now you're going to head back to the third church of America and run behind it into a portal and take the portal all the way into the northeast of Kaled. At this point, you're going to follow the route that I'm going to show you on the screen and you're going to head directly south all the way down until you reach Fort Faroth. There is a giant dragon there that can give you up to 75,000 runes, but he does take a long time to kill, which is why we snagged the bleed weapon. So continue on this route. You're going to run past the dragon on the bridge, and then after the bridge, there's going to be an Erdtree avatar. Stay to the right as you are no match for that Erdtree currently, but you can run around that tree where there's going to be a wind geyser. Take the Wind Geyser up and over, and that will dump you right out next to Fort Faroth, where you can snag the Fort Faroth Site of Grace. Now that you've gotten the Fort Faroth Site of Grace, you can run directly down to the dragon, and you can start hacking away at him. This is going to take a few minutes, considering you have a level 1 weapon, but the chunks of bleed damage that it will take off will make this a lot easier than if you were just to hack and slash away with your battle axe. At some point in the distant future, you will have finally killed this dragon, and you can run back to the Fort Faroth site of Grace and start leveling up. The runes from the dragon are going to allow you to get your strength to 34 and dexterity to 12 so you can wield the greatsword. It'll allow you also to get your vigor up to 18 in order for you not to get one shot. At this point, you will notice though with the greatsword equipped that you are going to have a heavy load. All you need to do is unequip your gloves, which are not going to provide almost anything this early in the game anyway, and that will take you back to a medium load. At this point, to get a few extra runes to level up your weapon, all you're going to need to do is head to the Groveside Cave even kill that boss, which you're absolutely going to decimate even before your weapon is leveled up. You're then after that going to head to the Limgrave tunnels and get all the smithing stones within those tunnels and also absolutely decimate the giant at the end. And the last enemy you need to kill in order to get some easy runes is the Bloodhound down in the Forlorn Hound Everjail. From that point, you can head up to these two graveyards located right here and right here on the map, and those will give you all the runes you need in order to level your weapon up. At this point, you can head into Stormvale Castle and fight Marg at the fell omen. You will absolutely crush him with the amount of damage you're going to do, and after you kill him, you will have unlocked your second talisman slot, allowing you to get the beginning of a really awesome build in Elden Ring. Now, after you beat Mark at the Fell Omen, you will have a great sword that is anywhere from level 1 to level 3. You will also have the Axe Talisman and the Green Turtle Talisman, and you will have the Strength Knot Crystal Tier, increasing your strength by 10, and the Spiked Crack Tier, which is going to temporarily increase your charged attack power. All this is going to combine to give you a really awesome early game to mid game build that's going to rely heavily on charged R2s and absolutely absolutely destroying your enemies with the immense amount of damage you're going to be doing. You will be level 34 to 40 depending on how much you decide to grind in Limgrave, and your strength should be 34, your dexterity is 12, your vigor is 18, and your endurance is 14. Everything else is left untouched. And guys, with that being said, you still have like 85% of Limgrave to go back and do, bosses to kill, runes to gather, and you will be much higher level if you decide to be and go into Stormvale Castle. But that is going to be the overpowered strength build early. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Obviously, subscribe if you have not. It definitely helps out the channel a ton. And if you want to see one of these with a faith build, intelligence build, or a dexterity build, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to make a few more of these videos. I absolutely love making these videos for you guys. But I appreciate it a ton. Thank you guys so much for watching until the end. And until next time, stay safe, enjoy the game, and I'll see you in the next one.